Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Lucas here from Team Noko Yu Gi Oh! and of course from Team Draco Pals. I'm uh, sorry, wrong team. And from Team FTK. And tonight, guys, we were going to be going over my, excuse me, my um, anti meta deck profile. This is the deck I ran at regionals at YCS. Because after YCS, when it comes to a regionals, you're able to change your deck. You just have to write down whatever you want to write down, what deck you're playing after that. But yeah, this deck got me first place at regionals. I was extremely happy about that. And yeah, for our play mat, guys, we're going to be using is the YCS Championship Series, number 89, Diabolosis, the Mind Hacker play mat. So I'm really excited to show you guys this play mat. I'm really excited to show you guys this deck profile. If you guys do enjoy this deck profile, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And on that, guys, let's get through the deck profile. Now, I'm really excited to share this deck with you guys because my friend Jesse was wanting me to do this deck profile for you guys, and plus I wanted to show you guys what I ran, so it's a twofer, it's a win-win situation. So the three, we're going to go through monsters, spells, traps, and then extra deck. I don't have a side deck because I didn't run one, and yeah, you guys will understand soon. But anyways, let's begin. So we're running three copies of Inspector Border. This card is extremely busted in today's meta because you can summon it to your opponent's, to your side of the field, Pass your turn, and then the way Inspector Border works is during your opponent's turn, if they have not linked Xyz, Fusion, Synchroed before their turn, before your turn, they can't activate any monster effects. But during their next turn, if they link summon, Xyz summon, and stuff like that, they get to activate a monster effect depending on the times that they've Synchro, Xyz, and Fusion. So it's good to slow them down. It's a 2000 beat stick, so it's really fun to run in the deck. Good to have it in an opening hand. If you do not have it in an opening hand, then well, you know, you guys are kind of screwed at that point, but you run three Inspector Border. Um, you run also three Fossil Dino Paladefo. This card is really good to have because you can set it. Then when they attack it, it flips it face up. When it's flipped face up, it destroys all special summon monsters they control, so it's good to clear their field if they're running a lot of Goki, a lot of Valor Geist, a lot of Trickstar stuff, just a lot of stuff that does a lot of special summoning. Then two copies of Thunder King Ryo, good card to have in the deck because neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand, which is good to have because a lot of players out there with their anti with their meta decks try to add stuff, so that's why you want to normal summon Thunder King as soon as you can, just to make sure they can't really do anything when that happens. Um, two copies of Eater of Millions, this card is extremely fun to play because you basically banish your extra deck and this card gets a good amount of attack and for each card banished it gains more attack, it becomes more bigger, it's just a good card to have to clear their field. And then the other two cards you guys are going to be surprised about is Double Demise, King of Armageddon. This card is absolutely broken because I can basically ritual summon him, use his effect, blow up everything else except himself, and... Because when he works is when you pay the 2,000, use his effect, you chain with Wabaku, protects your monsters, but blows up your opponents, so it's good to have. That's your monster buildup. Not really any hand traps in this deck because this deck does not need any hand traps the way I'm running it. Spells you're going off of is three copies of Inferno Tempest. Really good card to have because your opponent could have a Boral Load or Boral Sword out. Swing for 3k, chain, Inferno Tempest. Boom, that's it. They're just, they're done at that point because they don't have any monsters. They have a bunch of spells and traps that they can't really use. And yeah, it's really fun to have in the deck. Um, if you have this, they banish all the monsters in their graveyard and deck. And let's say they have some monsters in their hand, you chain with also. Uh, what was it? With Trickstar Reincarnation, which makes them banish any monsters they have in their hand, just draws a bunch of spells and traps, and then they just tap out. Double Pot of Duality, because you run it to basically search for, reveal the top three cards, and if any card looks good, you add it to your hand, the rest gets shuffled back in, so it's good to see what those top three cards were. Double End of the World, because of Demise. Whoops, that card wasn't supposed to fly over there. Double called by the grave, because your opponent's going to try and activate as many effects as they can in the grave if anything is sent there, so you chain with called by the grave to keep them from doing that. Double scapegoat, you can activate it at the end of their turn, and when you play the scapegoat, then you just have a bunch of tokens that you can go into your own link summoning. That is the spell lineup for you guys out there. Yeah, triple inferno tempest. Whew. Oh, if I can pick you up. Oh, there we go. Triple inferno. Ooh, that is a very, very spicy, spicy problem right there. Double Reincarnation, simple enough. They try and have monsters in their hand after Inferno Tempest, you chain with Reincarnation. <laughs> That's what they don't like, is when you play Reincarnation, they send a good amount of cards from their hand to the graveyard and they don't like it. Double Anti-Spell, because remember guys, we're running an anti-meta deck profile. Has Anti in it. You and your opponent must set spells before activating them. Which I really don't mind, because most of my spells are already have been set. So I wouldn't really care about that when that chains off. 
Bottomless, anything that's 1500 or more attack gets banished. If I activate it, it targets a monster that was summoned that has 1500 or more attack and banishes it. To Floodgate, because if they summon a bunch of monsters, like with rockets, if they summon a bunch of five, you say on the turn that you summoned all five, activate Floodgate. <laughs> Ooh, they get really salty if that happens. Double Drowning Mirror Force, because if they're attacking you directly, you need to have that ready just in case so that you can shuffle them all back in. Double Heavy Storm Duster, activate this ending their turn or during their turn, because if you activate it during your turn, you can't attack, but it's a good thing card to have just to move things out of the way. Double Wabaku, because this works good with Demise. If, they're tr if you're using Demise to basically blow up the field, you chain Wabaku, protecting your monsters. Double Waking Dragon, I'll tell you guys why I run Double Waking Dragon in there is because I have a lot of cards in my extra deck that I could I could summon out, but I also use Waking the Dragon just to get them out if, they, if it's blown up by a card effect. And then Double DD Dynamite because Inferno Tempest, you banish, they banish, chain DD Dynamite. Whew, that's a good game right there. Ooh, my deck is kind of hard to pull up because I have really thick, thin, th thin sleeves. Excuse me. Wow. Extra deck. One Bora Load, really fun to have because you can attack. Bora Load effect, gain control of that monster and just poke them again. Top of Logic to blow up your spells and your opponents and they take 300 for each one, so it's a burn part. Ningirsu, I didn't really see too much of him, but he was fun to run. He's fun to run if you link someone with two link monsters and then use his effect, target one card you control and one card your opponent controls. Whoosh, just send them back in. One Ib, because if she's co-linked, she can't be destroyed by card effects. I think it's card effects in battle, I don't know. Underclock, because anything that co-links to it, you can use his effect, target the co-link monster and target a monster your opponent controls and make your opponent's monster lose attack equal to underclock's attack. One Phoenix, because it blows up spells and traps and if it's co-linked, you draw a card. One Link Spider for your Link Monsters. Then you got Utopia, Lightning, because if Lightning attacks, your opponent can activate card effects in response. Giant Hand, target a monster on their side of the field. As long as Giant Hand's on the field, the monster's effect is negated. One Baguska, really fun to have just for kind of keeping them stalled and keeping them in defense. Abyss Dweller is really, really good to play in today's meta because it has the effect to where if your opponent tries and activates any card effects in the grave, detach from Abyss Dweller, negate that from going off. One Castel, because it bounces back spell monsters to your hand or to the deck. Then the two Link Bond, two Synchro monsters that I can use for waking the dragons is Black Rose Dragon, blows up the field, you guys know how that card goes. And Crew, uh, cl uh, excuse me, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, because if it attacks on a level 5 monster or higher activates its effect, use Crystal Wing, negate, gains attack to it. But yeah, overall it's a really fun deck. It's got a lot of consistency and a lot of fun stuff with it. Anyways guys, I do hope you guys did enjoy my deck profile on my anti-meta deck profile. If you guys want to see more deck profiles, link in the description below. Don't forget guys, again, check out Team FTK down in the description below and Team Noko Yu-Gi-Oh! down in the description below. Anyway guys, I'll see y'all in the next video. Later.